is it enough or we just get awakened when someone dies then we are talking about it otherwise we wouldn't have even talked about the kind of situation that we have of delhi streets it is a classic case of multi organ failure and there are very many reasons every time we have such untoward incident the media also wakes up and the government also swings into action they have their yes. canteens in the basement and it's running in a free flow there is nobody who is coming and going to you know stop it until and unless someone dies all those who are responsible must be must be brought to books as my learned panelists both are legal luminaries so to say i totally agree with them on this point what is the way ahead is it going to continue like this millions and millions of rupees involved it's a private uh, you know education system what is it happening in india nobody is bothered about uh, welfare of these students and things and uh, we have all sympathy for these uh, three uh, brilliant students who could be ias officers in our country hello and welcome i am nagin singh and today we are here to discuss one of the big issues that we are seeing in india and that's about how all these education institutes are working in india what kind of limitations are there is there corruption involved how the death of three students took place in rajinder nagar who is responsible and if the educationists of india have turned into mafia well we are being joined by people from different departments we have an advocate we have a retired police officer we have an educationist as well i am going to introduce you to everyone and then we are going to take further this discussion who is responsible if indian educationists are turning into a big mafia because it's a multi billion business in india to educate students well i have been joined by three of the panelists i have elen rao he is a former dcp of special cell we have advocate anubha shrivastava sahai she is the president of india white parents association and child rights activist and then we have mr braj kishor gupta he is educationist and chief mentor gainship and the name of his organization is gain step well first of all i'll go to mr elen rao mr rao who is responsible what is happening is there corruption involved when someone mc someone like mcd or the other departments they give them a place uh, the basement and everything uh, we have figured out that uh, there were no appropriate uh, uh, instructions given by mcd to run the, that particular place that particular library but it was running in the basement so how does it really work who are the people who give these kind of uh, uh, you know uh, there are the, there are no restriction on the kind of places that are being used by these big educationers education departments yes nagendra ji this is a very uh, a serious incident which uh, shattered the uh, minds of so many uh, our indians especially when these three uh, brilliant uh, students were and done to death because of some uh, negligence at uh, on the part of not only language this is a uh, case of culpable homicide not amounting to murder it is covered under section 105 106 and 290 of bnc latest uh, 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 law, uh, laws on bnc offenses uh, has been explained in that uh, let me uh, let you um, let me uh, apprise of the facts till now which i have come across that this this uh, premises was being used as a library uh, and a study room a study place for the aspirants of uh, uh, the candidates who are uh, who are preparing for is and civil services examinations and that was a basement if by law the right. building by law we can see that basement cannot be used for these type of purposes that is very clear the basement is um, uh, may be used uh, by the uh, uh, for the purpose of storage some stuffs and particularly in some cases that uh, uh, some lawyers and some uh, doctors and uh, architects so many uh, there are six category they can be allowed to be used uh, uh, basement as the offices also but in this case um, i must tell you there was some complaint about the uh, sewage that water was coming into this uh, place and there was previously a complaint as stated by the students and that was not looked at looked after that complaint was not taken care of by anyone by the concerned officials of mcd and also uh, there is a requirement of noc noc means no aggression certificate right. by the 
um, by the fire department also, um, because um, that fire department is also has to see if the place which is being used for the study purposes is worth uh, worth uh, using that. Is, if there is any fire incident, then there, is there any escape route? And in the basements also, there is a provision and in MCD bylaws that there, there should be some another exit also. There should be two exits uh, so that in case of eventuality that there cannot be a stampede and in that uh, two exits can be used for evacuating these uh, persons who have been trapped in this uh, any any type, type of tragedy. So uh, this case seems to be the blended blatant um, uh, ignorance or blatant, uh, you can say, uh, uh, the misuse of the building bylaws and um, uh, um, the floating the rules of uh, MCD on these, pers uh, on, these uh, on these aspects. So investigation is being carried out. The persons, I think seven persons have been arrested till now. And right. uh, uh, further, the investigation is being carried out and the whosoever is the responsible person in this case, they will not be spared because this is a very serious, uh, you can say gruesome uh, 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 kind of um, uh, uh, yes, uh, there incident. Yes, there were almost 27 students who were there. But when yes. it comes to responsibility, uh, Rao IS, they have come up with a statement, but there's nothing more than the, than the death of uh, three students. Well, coming to... Uh, Anuva Shrivastava, she is an advocate. Uh, Ms. Shrivastava, what do you think? What kind of actions are being taken? Will someone will really be responsible or it is just the decision of, you know, barring 13 institutes? They have uh, said that they are going to lock down 13 institutes in uh, Delhi. But is it enough or we just get awakened when someone dies? Then we are talking about it. Otherwise, we wouldn't have even talked about the kind of situation that we have of Delhi streets. Thank you for having me on this show. And actually, uh, this is a very serious issue. And as a, the, the panelist, Mr. Rao, also pointed out that these authorities must be booked the culpable homicide on all, uh, also for criminal negligence. Because what has been done by the, I don't know how come such institute was running the basement. There might be some other institute also, maybe some in other uh, uh, basement areas. They have to. Uh, they have to, uh, they cannot get permission. How they got the permission, how they got the NOC from fire department, all these things needs to be investigated and strict action must be taken. Taken against not only the institute, coaching institute, but also against the authorities because they are the main, cul main culprits. The authorities are the main culprits uh, who has given permission to run such uh, uh, institute, coaching institute, which is not allowed. Yes, definitely you can do you can store, you can do parking. Parking is allowed in basement, storage is allowed, but that also needs requires permission. On what basis these institutes got permission? We have to we must find out. And I, I would say that a CBI investigation must be ordered immediately against the authorities and but the authorities must the be who, who will be can we say that there is one authority that is responsible? Where does the buck stop on this? See, the authorities, everyone is responsible, not only MCD, the fire department. A fire department issues NOC to each and every building. Without NOC, you cannot get OC. That is mandatory. How come this building was running? And, in spite, and apart from the fire NOC, they have to conduct inspection, regular inspection. Why that was not being done by the fire department? Why that was not being done by the MCD? Why all these authorities were silent? I don't know how many uh, in how many buildings, like in uh, Mumbai, BMC conducts inspection right. of all the schools, of all the premises, whether that structure is okay or not, and then they issue notice. I don't know how come in Delhi such things are not happening, which is the capital of our country. First part is that mm -hmm. Delhi being the capital of our country, they're seeing such incident. What will the situation in other cities and small towns? I don't know. Definitely, uh, if the uh, government will not take action, then I don't think these institutes or maybe other uh, coaching mafias or any other business uh, people who are doing such business in the premises using basement, using illegal, uh, doing illegal activities. I would say that this is an illegal activity and this must be stopped so that people in other states or other cities will not do such things. 
we living in delhi or uh, we know about cities like bombay it is all in front of us it is a daily thing right. which happens but all these issues become bigger we can think of the basement or a library in the basement today but there are multiple places they have their uh, uh, their you know they have their cafes they have their yes. canteens in the basement and it's running in a free flow there is nobody who is coming and going to you know stop it until and unless someone dies now let's yes. go back to uh, the educationist that we have mr braj kishor gupta uh, what do you think about you know what is happening in these institutes they charge uh, from 1 lakh to 3 lakh to 4 lakhs to prepare you for a ias but uh, they cannot give you a guarantee that your child is safe in that place where uh, you know children are being sent for studies and they are spending hefty money they are paying hefty money to all these institutes without the basic necessities or the basic infrastructure thank you thank you for the for the invitation two of my learned panelists uh, have had uh, uh, very legal perspectives and they are absolutely right i agree with them but first of all my heartfelt condolences goes for the, with the parents of shreya tania and dalvin uh, it's very unfortunate that three young lives have been uh, lost nothing can compensate that but what i feel we are more interested in doing lip service my focus is to understand the entire situation in a holistic perspective this is a classic case of multi organ failure it is a yes. classic case of multi organ failure and there are very many regions every time we have such untoward incident the media also wakes up and the government also swings into action and we have now a lot of media doing this but is this different from what happened in kota that's my question to the media it is not this is not one incident my friend this has been happening why does it happen if we are we if we are but thinking or trying to punish the guilty that is very legitimate that is in accordance right. with the law but but you have to go into the genesis of the matter who all are responsible it is not just the law if you see the credibility of law i is coaching institute it 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 has done wonders in terms of producing ias but right. here the focus is not the credibility of the institute it is the it is it is something else it is the security reason why 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 uh, did did the students get locked up it was primarily the failure of the biometrics number one number two as as my learned panelist rightly talked about an noc was required for running that kind of business that was not meant to be so and it was not one party that is to be singled out so what i feel we have to see education as a whole also because today we are talking not in terms of gdp we are talking about hdi human angle is very very important what is the fun right. in quality education if lives cannot be saved my friend government has to wake up here government has to give priority to education and when i say priority to education it is not just the quality of education if lives cannot be saved where where in lies the significance and importance of quality in education my friend so saving life has to be the top priority and the government cannot be exonerated from the blame all those who are responsible must be must be brought to books as my learned panelists both are legal luminaries so to say i totally agree with them on this point but this is a classic case of multi 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 organ failure i stand by that. but in in such a scenario my question is to uh, all three of you we'll keep it short one minute um, you must have children you are parents yourself so in a situation like this uh, we already know that parents are spending so much but what are the things they are going to see before sending someone to a place like rao is so many big institutions uh, we are live from uh, noida sector 62 even in this area we have multiple institutions all the is institutes are here uh, but what should a parent think about in a place like india where we have no clarity uh, or we cannot have a you know written guarantee from any of the institutions that their child is safe what are they going to think of before sending their kids to study to such institutions which are huge which are popular which are one of the best names in india uh, if you want to become an is 
So what should a person, what should a parent think before sending their kids to these kind of institutions? My question is to all three of you. See what, uh, can I comment? Sure, sure. See what, uh, as far as the institutes are concerned, coaching institutes, we have been raising much. Schools and other uh, issues are separate. But today we are discussing about coaching institutes, not colleges and schools. Yeah. Uh, so it is affecting problem even school and colleges. As far as uh, as coaching institutes are concerned, we can see since past four or five years there is mushrooming of uh, uh, these institutes in every hook and corner across India. So we have been demanding the government since few years that bring a legislation to regulate these coaching institutes. Now the government has come up with a regulation, and there are certain guidelines which these institutes have to follow. Otherwise, their recognition will be cancelled or they will not be able to run the coaching classes. So that is a good step, no doubt. But again, implementation is a very big challenge. As far as implementation is concerned, we know the incident which happened in Delhi, unfortunately, we lost students. And uh, the authorities, as far as the NOC from uh, fire department is concerned, that that was not in place. And how they got NOC, we don't know. So corruption is there, no doubt. So even if the regulation comes, we don't know whether the uh, regulation will be implemented. So parents are worried. If they are sending our children to these institutes, they must give us guarantee that, yes, your child is safe. If there is any problem, it's not only about the incident which happened. If there is any mental problem, they still the facing like in Kota and all, whether they will be getting yeah. any counselor. So, so many things are there. So it's high time that we everybody should come forward. Not only that the coaching institutes, or the government, or the authorities, every stakeholder who are involved must yes. come forward to bring reform in education system in our country. Otherwise, it yes. is very difficult to survive. Yes. My but has it become like a mafia? You think, yes. you yes. think yes. that it has become like a mafia operating is, in a big it, system, it, in a legal so manner? Now. Yes, it is like a mafia nowadays. It is like a mafia. That's why regulation is required. Now the anti, uh, so many, now the regulation which has come, definitely again, to regulate coaching institute, which we have been demanding, we expect that the government must implement it on ground. That is I, what we are expecting. And strict I, action, I, to demand strict I, action against the authorities for this incident. Yes, I can't, dis I can't, dis yes, yes, please, if you want to say. Yes, yes, I can't. Uh, that, that uh, regulation is, uh, uh, by the government is most welcome. And there, there are some guidelines as well as, the standard operating procedure is also mentioned in that. And I think that if it is implemented, that is very important. Uh, I agree with Anuvaji that uh, the most important part is that, that um, uh, how it is implemented. The implementation part, part is most important because laws are there, no doubt in that. But if these are not followed or these are not implemented in a real uh, uh, latent spirit, then they are useless. So in this no. case, if there is any floating, floating from these bylaws and by sections or the directions um, as prescribed by the government to run these institutions, then there should be a, a sticker section against them. They should not be allowed to run all these things because definitely you can say indirectly that these are the mafias um, uh, on the in the name of education. They are selling the education because in the garb of these coaching institutions, they are, uh, in this case also, you can see that, that, that uh, this, uh, this, this organization was earning huge, minting huge money, but uh, they, could, they could not uh, take a space when they, this, uh, their, uh, their students could accommodate in a very proper environment, uh, not in the basement, but in some other floor, uh, which having a good light, good air and everything. Because uh, if they are being paid heavily, then they should also take care of the welfare of these students. So, so that they can, um, uh, uh, they can learn so many other things also. But in this case, I think that was the apathy on the part of the uh, institution and other um, the civil department as well as uh, other authorities who are responsible to check all these uh, um, uh, irregularities and they could not uh, they could not detect it and uh, not only this i must tell you uh, mr nagendra there are so many other um, institutions are going on in delhi particularly and not only in delhi also but you can see go and uh, see the kota kota area also is also yeah. very famous for these things so if you survey all these uh, the institutions survey all the places you will find that there are uh, these bylaws and the rules and regulations are flouted like anything 
nobody is bothered about uh, welfare of the students and the, uh, we have all sympathy for these uh, three uh, brilliant students who could be IAS officers in our country, but they are no more now because of the um, uh, this uh, negligent part and the apathy on the part of this uh, organization. Uh, owner and the coordinator or runner who was uh, responsible in this case. So uh, this case after investigation will come out with these so many other uh, answers, all, all, all questions that who are responsible and the, what action has been taken against whom. There so is Mr. No Gupta, so just the last question and of course we want to wind up with you. Uh, you, have been in, uh, you have been in education for so many years. Uh, you know how much of how much of money is involved in this business you also know that how uh, so many or uh, so many educational institutes these uh, centers coaching centers have erupted throughout india in last few years so where are we heading where are we heading as a nation in terms of education and what is the way ahead is it going to continue like this millions and millions of rupees involved it's a private uh, you know education system what is it happening in india let me let me answer your question by asking a counter question. Why is that happening? My learned panelists talked about the irregularities and corruption. There is no denying that. Of course, all that exists there and that must be checked. I totally agree with them. My point is, why is the need for mushrooming of educational institutes? Our educational institutions are failing to cater to the aspirations of the students. What is that aspiration all about? Joblessness. These institutions promise you jobs. And as a parent, I would like my child to, to get a job. Yes or no, you tell me. So why is that happening? So the question comes, we have to revisit our education system. What do I mean by that? The curriculum system, the curriculum that we have has to be restructured. Why can't we have teachers? Why can't we have study materials for, for our students that will prepare them for competitive exams like CLAT, like civil services, like engineering. Why can't we do that? The problem is we are focused exclusively on an event that happens and we have discussion and debate on that. And thereafter, everything is forgotten till an untoward incident occurs. So to conclude, right. my friend, I say, we have to understand that the strength of India has always been education. It was not for nothing that it was said, Jakti kahin gyan ki jyoti sikcha ki yadi kami na hoti, to ye gram swag ban jati. That is not happening today. We have to revisit our education system. And in this context, NEP has done a good job by bringing focus back on, on entrepreneurship, on, in, on, in, on internship, and on creating jobs. But the other aspects, how can we make our educational system across the nation? competitive in terms of preparing our children only then only then can such mushrooming of educational institutions be stopped otherwise we will go on blaming and blaming and that will not resolve the malice which is eroding the very fabric of the nation How, however it seems it's a long way to go when we look at the number of institutes that we have the amount of money that is involved in it. It seems like India has a long way to go if we want to reform our education system. Uh, we know that the governments have been saying that they will be reforming and they are into the process. They have, of course, reformed uh, so much of uh, the syllabus. Uh, but let's see what uh, how it goes uh, in terms of, you know, reforming the higher education, which is the demand of the country, demand of uh, so many youngsters who are who are jobless. And of course, I understand when you talk about that, it all erupts from one place that, of course, everybody needs a job and millions of millions of students who are there, they're still struggling. They're trying for IAS, for NEET, for uh, so many big exams that happen in India. Well, thank you so much for everyone for joining and bringing in your perspective from the police department, from the law and the educationist yourself. Thank you so much, Mr. Rao, uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Srivastav, and uh, Mr. Gupta. I think we'll be connecting again. And thank you for raising the issue. We here at uh, One India, we have been on the ground since it all happened. We have been bringing you the coverage. And we are also bringing you some of the interviews of the eyewitnesses who were there 
at the spot when it all happened because mind you there were 27 students who were stuck thank you so much for your time sir i think thank we'll be you. connecting again and uh, we'll have thank a longer you. chat when we can, if you can call thank me thank you thank you thank you again thank you very much thank, thank you very much thank you very much thank, thank you, you, sir. Sir. Thank thank you. Sir. this is nagin singh for one india don't miss out follow one india for real time updates 